and we have a lot to cover in this video we're going to be getting this keychain right here and we're going to be riding this motorcycle right here on the freeway and um, so this is the key to a very fun ride on this motorcycle now you are looking at an SV1000 motorcycle I recently put this windscreen on I love it it helps to combat the wind I just gassed up when I'm getting on notice I'm hands-free so let's start it up and I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things first of all this Wednesday hold on let me start this up resetting my fuel odometer this Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time right below this video let me let this guy get in real quick we are having a huge meeting um, Wednesday at 7 o'clock Pacific time and so if you look right below this video you'll um, hold on I gotta pull up more for some reason I think they want diesel I'm sorry <laughs> people interrupt my, my video I guess I should get out of the way um, Wednesday 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time right below here we are having a huge meeting uh, let me get the camera situated go into the conference room we're going to be watching atheist Christopher Hitchens lose in debate to Dr. William Lane Craig we're going to be watching the entire debate that was filmed uh, it's awesome you guys are really going to enjoy it and you're going to see what I go through in debates with these atheists now last night I had one debate I won real quick with Sean and I'm going to talk to you about that. And then another dude came in. Well, he was actually there during the debate with Sean. Let's get out on the street. And um, he goes, well, I want to debate you. And so I had to do back-to-back -back debates. It's so exhausting. But we won both of them. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk to you about the bankrupt worldview of atheism and, and how they lost the debate. Now, probably the most epic ownage in the debate was when one of my atheist opponents flat out basically came out and admitted God existed in his own little way. Hold on, I'm going to fix this camera. I'm going to tell you about that. We're going to get on the freeway, so I promise to get you some fun speeds. Extremely hot here in California. Okay, first of all, let's start with Sean. Sean uh, was in the room, and he, he didn't like my question, what proof and evidence do you have that atheism is accurate and correct, because he could not answer the question. As you know, the amazing atheist was not able to answer that question. Thunderfoot's not able to answer it. Every single atheist on YouTube has not provided proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct. It's a faith-based, humanistic worldview based on blind faith. The Atheist Experience Show could not provide any proof and evidence. I'm getting emails from you guys saying that they are blocking you and not taking your calls when you ask that question. They're terrified of it because there is no proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct. I challenge you, my friend, call the Atheist Experience Show and ask them what proof and evidence do you have that atheism is accurate and correct. They won't take your call. If they did, they'll probably obsess about pink unicorns and cardboard boxes. So let's talk about Sean first. First of all, Sean kept saying he doesn't have to give any arguments. See, the topic of the debate is, are there good reasons to believe that God exists? Are there good reasons to believe God doesn't exist? He gave us no reason at all to believe that God doesn't exist. He just kept saying he doesn't have to give any arguments. Well, that's why he doesn't have to win the debate. He lost the debate. In fact, um, one of the guys in the chat room there that witnessed this he said that Sean was uh, intellectually lazy. He says you don't go into a debate and not give any arguments. And um, no offense to Sean, we love you, brother, but you got to get out of atheism. It is an intellectually lazy position. He had no arguments. That's it. Now, I go through five arguments. The cosmological argument, which talks about the existence of the universe and whatever begins to exist had a cause. The universe began to exist, therefore it has a cause. And I postulate that the, 
the cause has to be uncaused. And I go through all this stuff. We talked about the teleological argument, how fine-tuned the universe is, 50 constants that need to be radically, exquisitely fine-tuned. We talked about objective values. We talked about Jesus Christ. We talked about experiential reality where we experience God within our lives. Sean was unable to debunk all five of those arguments, yet he gave no arguments. That was an easy win. Now, the other guy gave two arguments, and both, hold on. The other guy, 754 or whatever, 75 something, he gave two arguments. He talked for 20 minutes about nothing. But there was two arguments that you, if you want to be generous and say they were arguments that he gave, let's talk about that. First of all, um, well, he said, I'll go through a bunch of things, even though they weren't really plausible arguments. He said Jesus was just a pagan myth. Now, he didn't give any arguments to substantiate that, and this is what atheists do. I'm seeing a trend. They just claim things, but they don't give an argument for it. They don't give any proof and evidence. Well, if everyone's just going to claim things, if I just say God doesn't exist or God does exist, it doesn't make any sense. You have to have argumentation for it. Well, I debunked his pagan myth. I went through a bunch of these pagan gods that he said, and I showed how they're clearly not the same as Jesus Christ. You can go to shockonl.net right below here. Click proof Jesus is not a pagan parallel myth. I got all of them there. He admits I debunked that. So he brings up um, finally an actual argument. But the only problem though, it's, be, it's been debunked like 10 years ago. But I will give the guy credit. At least he didn't say he doesn't have to give arguments. He attempted, he said, suffering in the world proves that God doesn't exist. Now I asked him several times, how does it prove God doesn't exist? He could not answer. I proved that suffering in the world is compatible with the Christian God. For example, look at Paul. Paul was suffering. Read Romans. Also read, heck, the whole, whole Bible, where Jesus says, take up your cross. This is suffering. When Paul is praying to God, because he's suffering, uh, he, some people believe a demon was following him around, tormenting him, or he had a physical handicap of some sort. And, um, let me get around these people so I can give you some good speech. And Paul prayed. You could read this. Paul prayed for God to remove the suffering. And God said, I'm not going to do it. He said, because Paul, when you're weak, you are strong for me. So there is a rational reason to allow suffering in the world. However, suffering in the world also clearly proves the Christian God exists. So in a weird sort of way, 754 was helping my side. I agree that all those other gods are false, but clearly suffering in the world is totally compatible with the Christian God. You know, also if you read the Bible, it says there over and over and God gave them up and God gave them up because mankind has fallen. Mankind has turned his back on God. So suffering also is a product of sin within the world and also we have Satan within the world. So, as far as the other gods, I'm fine if, if, if those gods don't exist, but clearly he has proven that the Christian God is compatible with suffering. Now, on the cosmological argument, he said he does agree the universe is finite, but God needs to be created himself. So, we were waiting. We said, okay, why does God need to be created? He failed on that. He, he did not have an answer. He was tongue-tied. He loses the cosmological argument there. He could not debunk mine, yet he did not give arguments why God need to be created. Um, on the teleological argument, he was totally ignorant, uh, no offense to 754, but he was totally ignorant of what the teleological argument is. The teleological argument talks about the fine-tuned universe over, over uh, hold on a second. Throughout the universe and over in the universe, there's these fine-tuned constants that if they weren't just the right way, you could change some of these constants and you could actually destroy life as we know it here on the planet. 
Now, Sean, even though Sean lost the debate, at least he conceded with me that that was true. So I give him points for honesty. He admitted that this was true. The other guy, however, didn't even touch on the fine-tuned constant. Once again, for the second time, he claimed that God needed to be created. Now, here's the problem with that. He's, by saying God needed to be created, number one, um, it's a false dichotomy because he's not really claiming that God doesn't exist. I'm not ready to concede that God needs to be created. But what he does is he says, God needs to be created. And again, I said, okay, why? Why? He was tongue-tied. He was silent. He just affirms it. When the clear fact of the matter is, what atheists don't like is that the universe is not eternal. Even Stephen Hawking, who's an atheist, agrees that the universe had a definite beginning. And even time itself came into being. So uh, clearly the atheist lost on the teleological argument. He is just ignorant of the facts. He doesn't understand what it is. Um, once again, he's trying to escape science. Um, oh, I got to tell you this. Not only did he, you know what? I got to get over here. Oh my gosh, I hope I can do it. I got to get over right where this big giant semi is. I got to go right in between that little... Hey! Don't get over! That semi would probably hurt. I gotta get over one more time. Okay, not only did he not debunk my arguments, uh, he did not debunk the cosmological argument. He just totally doesn't understand what the teleological argument is. On objective values, uh, he didn't debunk that either. In fact, one of the guys, Sean, admitted that we do not get objective values from atheism or evolution. So that was that was great that he said that. Uh, both of these atheists helped Christian theism more than atheism. In fact, there were Christians in the room saying, this debate really strengthened my Christianity because they're willing to see how full of crapola atheism is. Finally, I can give it some throttle. Hold on. But here's the part it's not often when you get a knockdown punch in a debate. Here's where I got a knockdown punch. What happens is the atheist messed up bad. He starts going on about how God was wrong to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And he was very angry at God. You could tell when he was talking about how God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He did not like it. He said that God was wrong, that God was evil. Now, you guys, do you get what he's saying here in a debate? He's supposed to be positing that God does not exist, but yet he's saying God was evil. You see what he, he's messing up? And I said, you really believe God was wrong to do that? Yes! Now, you notice he's not saying God doesn't exist. He really believes God was wrong. And I knew I had a knockdown punch there because this guy is supposed to be giving us reasons to believe why God doesn't exist. But he is giving us reasons to believe why God does exist by talking about God destroying Sodom. And we actually did find the historic Sodom. Archaeologists found it. So the atheist was going on and on, and I let him bury himself. I mean, he was just putting the shovel in and, and burying himself. And finally he was done, and I said, you guys, that's a knockdown right there in the, the debate. He just admitted God exists. How could he disagree with what God did in Sodom? How could he disagree and say it's evil? See, I don't believe unicorns or leprechauns or Santa Claus are evil. I don't believe Santa Claus is evil because he doesn't exist. I don't believe leprechauns are evil because he doesn't exist. The atheist admits God exists. And oh, this is number 46 and 47 debates that the atheists have lost. Now, if you guys want to see the type of evasion tactics atheists use, listen closely. Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Click right below here, shotgunout.net. I'm going to put two websites there. Go there Wednesday, 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. We're going to watch a two-hour debate. It's going to be awesome. God bless you.